John 4, 24. That they that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. By the grace of God, I'm working on a teaching that is going to show us exactly what that means. I think it's going to be a Friday teaching because it's going to take some time. How that scripture in John 4, 24 relates to the Old Testament tabernacle. So that we know what it means to worship God in spirit. Amen. Because we just, sometimes we just read it. How do you worship God in the spirit? When you are in the flesh. Hallelujah. I pray God will open our eyes to see the truth in his word. Amen. And today, by the grace of God, we're going to look at a topic that says the unseen worlds. The unseen worlds. Uh, we've been talking about this on Friday nights. And on Friday, as we wrapped up and we started to pray, the owner of the work said, why did you not bring this to a Sunday service? And I said, yes, Lord, whatever you say, we will do. So for those of us that don't come on Friday, the Holy Spirit is being merciful by bringing this message to you. It is a teaching. So get your pen and pencils and paper ready because there's going to be a lot of verses that we're going to go through so that we understand what the unseen walls are and what they truly stand for. I pray that God will open our inner eyes in the name of Jesus. Wow, only one person said amen. May God open my eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you because you are first and foremost a wonderful God. Nobody puts you in power and nobody can remove you from power. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And from eternity to eternity, you shall remain God. Thank you for this day that we can come before your presence to learn at your feet. We ask, my Lord and my God, in the name of your only son, Jesus Christ, that you open our eyes of understanding so that we can comprehend your word. And let our lives not remain the same. In the name of of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Like I said, the title is The Unseen Worlds. And please turn your Bible with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9 to verse 11. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9 to verse 11. When you're there, say praise the Lord. Lord. If you're not there, say wait for me. Okay, we're all there. The Bible says, Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, him being Jesus Christ, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things, in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. I want you to underline under the earth. Hallelujah. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. When we say that there is a heaven, we all easily believe to the glory of God that there is in fact a heaven. And when we say that there is a earth, by his grace, we are here on earth. So we can believe it. You can see earth with your physical eyes. But the same scripture that says of things in heaven, of things on earth, it now says there are things under the earth. And if you look at that verse 10, if you can go back to verse 10, you will see that the scripture is talking about different worlds. If I can use that term. Heaven earth and under the earth heaven earth and under the earth even the word heaven we misuse sometimes because there are several meanings to that word heaven praise god but what is under the earth if there's a heaven and there's an earth 
There must be an under the earth, according to the scripture. There must be something under us that we do not see. Praise God. Are you still with me? Yes, Glory be to God. There are five walls that are in this earth that we cannot see. Five. Amen. Five walls. Some of those walls are temporary places. It means it's not a permanent place. Even earth is not a permanent place. I pray you know that. Because a time is coming that this earth will be done away with. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me. Isaiah 26 verse number 19. Isaiah 26 verse 19. The Bible says, Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. What is Isaiah saying? Those that are dead will one day wake up. That is what Isaiah is telling us. He said, the dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. He said, awake and sing ye that dwell in dust. Who dwells in dust? Dead bodies. For the dew as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. So the dead are in the earth. Hello? Everyone that is dead, they are where? In earth. Praise God. You just can't see them. Because it's an unseen world. Praise God. Now come with me. Daniel chapter 12, verse number 2. Daniel chapter 12, verse number 2. The Bible says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So those that are dead, they are sleeping somewhere. And a day is coming. They are going to wake up. Some will end up in everlasting life. And some will end up in everlasting contempt. Praise God. So, beloved, there are billions of souls under the earth. Billions. Because billions, since the day of Adam, if I can start from there, can we count how many people have died? What about since the day of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Can we count how many people have died? You cannot. So, there are billions. Generations upon generations, their souls are here on earth. Praise God. Don't worry, you will understand. Some of you are giving me a puzzled look. It's okay. I was puzzled by it too. Praise God. But I said there are five walls that are beneath us. I'm going to start with the first one. The Hebrew word is called Sheol. S-H-E-O-L. And when you translate it to English, you get the word hell or the word grave. The word hell or the word grave. And this place has billions of inhabitants in it. Billions. Amen. Deuteronomy 32 verse 22. I'm not sure I will get the time to read through all the scriptures, but I'll give you the scriptures so you can go and read it yourself. The Bible says, For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. So there is a hell, the lowest hell. Praise God. Deuteronomy 32, verse 22. Now, come with me. Job chapter 10, verse 21 and 22. Job chapter 10, verse 21 and verse 22. Job describes it this way. He says, before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any other and where the light is as darkness. 
So that place is going to be so dark that any light there will be as darkness. That is how Job described hell. <laughs> Praise God. It continued in Job 21 verse 13. Job 21 13. He said, they spent their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. The word grave there is translated as Sheol, which is hell. And in the book of Luke chapter 16, if you read it from verse 19 all the way to verse 31, you will read the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Luke chapter 16 from verse 19 to verse 31. I'm not going to read it all. I'll just point out a few things. The Bible teaches us that there was a certain man. When Jesus said there's a certain man, it means it's real. It was not a parable. Because if it was a parable, he would have said, it looks like, but he didn't say it looks like. He said there was a certain man who was rich and feared sumptuously. And there was a beggar named Lazarus. So indeed, they existed. He said, Lazarus died and was carried by angels. And the rich man died and was buried. All of a sudden, the rich man opened his eyes and he was in hell. Being tormented. Ah, let me read the scripture to you. Let me read verse 23. The Bible says, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, he saw he was in hell and he was able to see Abraham and Lazarus. That means the world in which Abraham and Lazarus were is parallel to the world that hell is in. And that world is called paradise and I will share it with you later on. Amen. He was able to see that Abraham and Lazarus were in paradise while he was being tormented in hell. The torment was so much that he shouted to Abraham, please send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and just cool my tongue with one drop of water. What can one drop do? 50 gallons of water cannot solve his problem, let alone a drop of water. So beloved, that place is not meant for you and I. We are not designed to go there. And I pray none of us will go there in the name of Jesus Christ. What did Abraham tell him? Abraham said, between us, there is a gulf that is fixed so that nobody can cross from paradise into hell and nobody can cross from hell into paradise. You can only see us because in the spirit realm, there is no distance. That is why somebody can travel in the spirit realm from Georgia to your village in an instant because there's no distance in the spirit realm. It is only in the physical realm that you have to go to the airport, go through screening, catch a flight, they delay your flight, you sit there. In the spirit realm, in an instant, you can be there. That's why angels can move anywhere at any time and they are there. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still with me? Yes, Are you still with me? Are you sure? Yes, so there is a shield, which is another word for hell. And it's here on earth. We just can't see it. Amen. Amen. I will also share with you that the second one, which is paradise, is also here on earth. But we can't see it. Okay, you've heard, oh, there's a heaven, and then you say paradise, and we use the same word to describe the two. We're going to change that today. Hello? Paradise is different from heaven. And I'll prove it to you. Praise God. So when you say paradise, well, did I tell you who ends up in hell? All these souls that did not believe that there is Jesus. They're going there. That is where they will be enjoying themselves before Jesus returns. And all these souls that believe that there is a Jesus, it is in paradise they will be enjoying themselves until Jesus returns. And I'll prove it to you. 
Praise God. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. Let's go to the beginning. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 22 to verse 24. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 22 to verse 24. You remember when Adam and Eve sinned, right? The Bible says, and the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So God did not want Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of life so that they will live forever in their sins. He now said, therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden. The Lord sent Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. The Lord sent Adam and Eve from the garden of Eden to now go and be tilling the earth. Separate the two. There's a garden of Eden and there is a earth that they are supposed to till. Now look at verse 24. So he drove out man. God sent them out of the garden of Eden. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims. And a, with, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So God sent Adam and Eve packing from the garden of Eden. And he put an angel to guard the place. So that they don't break in and try to eat from the tree of life. Tell me, where is the garden of Eden today? It is an unseen world. It is paradise. Initially, God put Adam and Eve in paradise. When they sinned against God, God kicked them out of paradise. He put them here on earth. So paradise is here. It is a world that we cannot see with our physical eyes. That is why when God said, when you eat of this tree, you will surely die. What is that death? It's not a physical death because they lived and still are children. But they live physically, but the spiritual realm that they are connected with, which is the paradise that they can see here on earth, they lost it. So paradise is here on earth. You are shocked a little bit. Come with me, Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says, He that hath and hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life. Which tree of life? Is it not the same one from Genesis chapter 3? And look at this. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So the tree of life that Adam and Eve had access to was in paradise. But they lost it because they sinned. So we can no longer see paradise with our physical eyes. Because it is a spiritual world that is invisible unto us. But it is here on earth. Making sense? Praise God. Let's continue. In Luke 23... Verse number 43. Luke 23, verse number 43. Jesus said to the thief on the right, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me, Where? In paradise. Today. Today. Now tell me, please, How many days did Jesus spend in the grave? How many days? Three days. He spent three days. But the very day that he died, he told that thief, today, you will be with me. Where? So where did Jesus go first? Hi. He went to paradise first. Why did he go to paradise first? Come with me. Matthew chapter 27. We'll read it from verse 50. Matthew chapter 27 from verse 50. Pay attention, please. The Bible says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. 
and the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were opened. You see that? The graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Those that died before Christ that were in God they are called saints. They were in paradise. So when Jesus gave up the ghost, he took the thief with him to paradise. He woke up all the saints that were there. My people, it's time to go. And they came out of the graves. Ah. The more I learn the Bible, the more I know I don't know. Amen. The more you, you read this Bible, the more you will know that you don't know. Let me continue. The Bible says the graves were opened. Many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. The Bible was not talking about Jesus appearing to many. It's talking about the saints that were in the graves. They came out of their graves because they were in paradise. Jesus said, it's time for you to go. They came out and they're walking around the city, visiting their family members. Say, I'm your great, great, great grandfather. I serve the Lord. He kept me in paradise. But Jesus has come to wake me up. I just said, I'll come and say hello to you to encourage you to serve the Lord. So when the time comes, you too will end up in the same place. And when Jesus raptured, they went with him. Are you with me? Are you with me? So there are not ghosts walking around, chasing people, scaring people. No. They were saints that Jesus woke up from their graves because they were in a place called paradise here on earth. But it is not their permanent place. It is their temporary place. The Bible called Jesus the firstborn of the elect. Yes or no? Without him, nobody can enter heaven. So until Jesus Christ opened the gate of heaven, no saint could enter. Are you with me? No saint. So when Jesus resurrected, when he went up like this, all the other saints did what? They followed him. So since that time, there has not been any other rapture. So everybody that has died since that time, they are in paradise today. Waiting for the second coming of Jesus. When he will come and wake them up again. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I hope this is making sense. Yes, sir. Glory be to God. I pray we'll be counted among them. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 12. From verse 2 to verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 2 to verse 4. The Bible says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of body I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise. And heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. This is Apostle Paul. Bible scholar said he was speaking of himself. But he didn't want to boast. That's why he was speaking in the third person. I knew of a man. He was talking of himself. But so that he does not point the finger at himself to give glory to himself. He said, I knew of a man who was caught up into paradise. Somehow he was raptured and saw what was happening in paradise. And then he was sent back to say, it's not yet time for you to be here. Hallelujah. So, beloved, there is a paradise where all the saints will go and wait for Jesus. 
That is why the Bible says, if you read uh, I believe it's 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, that the saints that sleep in Christ, they are sleeping, they're not dead. The Bible said they are sleeping. And when, if someone is sleeping, at the time they wake up, right? So a day is coming that Jesus will wake them up. Some raptures have already taken place. Five of them actually. And two more are coming. Hallelujah. So if you don't think there is a rapture, think again. The Bible talked about Enoch, who walked with God. And all of a sudden, he was no more. The Bible said, for God took him. What happened to Enoch? He raptured. God didn't allow him to die. He just took him. He wouldn't die here. I'm sure you remember Elijah. He also did what? Raptured. In fact, chariots came to carry him. What an entrance. Hallelujah. What a glorious entrance. That God will send the limousine of heaven to come and carry his son. Why some people have been buried. <sighs> Glory be to God. We just read in Matthew 27. The saints that came out of the grave. They also did what? Raptured. I just told you about Apostle Paul. He also raptured to see what paradise looked like. And of course, my Lord and Savior Jesus, he also raptured. Five has happened. Two more are coming. I will be among the next one. Because the saints are going to rapture. If we sleep in the Lord before that time, he will wake us up and say, let's go. If we are still alive, at that time, it would just transport us. We would just go. Have you read it in the Bible? No? <sighs> Come with me. Second Thessalonians. I believe it's chapter 4. No, first. First Thessalonians, I'm sorry. Chapter 4 from verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13. The Bible says, but I will not have you to be ignorant. Say, I will not be ignorant. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as those which have no hope. You know, if someone sleeps in the Lord, don't sorrow. Rejoice for them. Because they are in a better place than you and I. That's what Paul is saying. He said, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that are dead in Christ, they will be the first one to go. And then those of us that are still alive, we follow. It's in the Bible. Hallelujah. I hope you know I'm not teaching you fables. Are you seeing it in your Bible? Glory be to God. He says, verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Is there black and white in the word of God that a time is coming, God will raise up those who are sleeping in him. But those who died and buried, they will end up in Sheol. But those who sleep in Christ will end up in paradise until Jesus comes to wake them up at the second coming. Amen. So the rapture of the church is coming, and the rapture of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation is also coming. Praise God. The third world under us is called Tartarus. T-A-R-T-A-R-U-S. Tartarus. 
This is the prison of the angels that slept with the women in the book of Genesis chapter 6. When the angels intermingled with humans. Let's read the scripture. Go and read Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse number 7. You will see what they did. That was right before God wiped out the entire earth with flood. Before the days of Noah. Or at the days of Noah. So before Noah, they sinned. They were making babies that were giants. Because it is not meant for angels to be sleeping with men or with women. Amen. First Peter chapter 3 from verse 18 to verse 20. First Peter chapter 18. I mean, First Peter chapter 3 from verse 18 to verse 20. The Bible says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Look at this next verse. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Which prison did Jesus go to preach unto the spirits? Which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. Now come with me to Second Peter chapter two, verse number four. Second Peter chapter two, verse number four. The Bible says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. The word hell there is Tartarus. And deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So all those angels from Genesis chapter 6 that sinned, they are in hell. Tartarus is under Sheol, by the way. Amen. Under Sheol. Are you with me? Jude, verse 6. Jude, verse 6. The Bible says, And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So the angels are there today, awaiting judgment are you still with me so you see this earth that you are in is not just you that live here it's not just you there are billions of inhabitants here on earth that you cannot see with your physical eyes if god were to open your spiritual eyes to see some of you will be having nightmares nightmares <laughs> there is a, a sister that prayed and prayed and prayed that God will open her spiritual eyes. God didn't answer. She cried and cried and cried. So God said, you want to see? She said, yes. God opened her eyes. What she saw? She herself with her own mouth couldn't say it. She saw creatures that she never knew existed here on earth. So when you are praying that God will open your eyes, make sure you, he opens it to see angels, <laughs> not to see demons. Praise God. All right, number four. Number four is the pit. The pit. The pit is the habitation of demons. This is where some demons are being caged right now. It is called the pit. Amen. Let me show you where the pit is. Come with me to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. The Bible says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Isaiah 
chapter 14, verse 15. You see how the scriptures separate hell from the pit? But they are next to each other. He said, hell is by the side of the pit. So the pit must be by the side of hell. And how do we know that it is demons that are in the pit? Uh, Luke chapter 8 verse 31. I'm sure these are scriptures you've read before. But we skip past them without looking into the detail. Luke chapter 8 verse 31. Remember when Jesus was casting out demons out of the man possessed by legion. And he said, what is your name? They said, our name is legion because we are many. The Bible says, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. In other words, they begged Jesus, don't send us into the pit because it is not yet our time. They know where they will end up. So they begged Jesus, don't send us into the pit because it is not, we are still supposed to be here tormenting men. Go and read Revelation chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 12. Revelation chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 12. This part of Revelation described when the fifth trumpet is blown. And when I'm talking about the trumpet, it is not for glory. This is the end time. Judgment here on earth. He said when the fifth trumpet is blown, the pit will be opened. And then all the demons that are there they will come out and they will torment men that are here. That's why we must make rapture. Because people that are left behind will be tormented by demons. You can imagine demons that have been caged for millions of years. How terrible they will be. Because they are hungry to torment men. They, they are ready, waiting. So anyone that is left here... <laughs> The type of torment they will see. The Bible says men will commit suicide, but they won't die. Go and read it. Revelation chapter 9. Men will stab themselves to die from the torment. But the Bible says they won't die. They will remain alive so they can continue to suffer. And you say you won't accept Jesus. <laughs> okay. Wait and see. Wait and see. God has made the way out. Why should we use our own hands to go to a different place? Why? God has made a way out. Are you still with me? Okay. Satan's home during the millennium is the pit. Remember in the book of Revelations, he will be chained for a thousand years. Right, let's, Revelations 20. Let's read verse 2 and 3. Revelations chapter 20, verse 2 and verse 3. The Bible says, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit. And shut him up. And set a seal upon him. That he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed for a season. So the devil will end up with his demons. For that one thousand years. But after one thousand years he will be released. The 1,000 years that is called the millennium, Jesus will rule here on earth. Amen. Can I shock you with one thing? Because many people think that all of us are coming back to enjoy the earth during millennium. It's not all of us. You want to see? Ah, let's go to Revelation. This one is an added bonus. I didn't want to. I just feel like adding it for us. Amen. Are you still with me? Are you learning something? Praise God. All right. Um, Re 
Revelations chapter 20. We just read verse 2 and 3, right? All right, let me continue with verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Read with me very carefully, please. Don't, don't pay attention to this. He saw souls of those that were beheaded because of Jesus Christ. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Pay attention to that. When will the beast worshipping happen? End time. Yes or no? End time. And he said, neither is image, neither has received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. The mark, 666. Those that have not received it. Keep, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, tell me, is it the people that are in paradise that the Bible says will reign with him? It is those that did not make rapture, but still remain obedient afterwards. They miss rapture because they missed it the first time. But the Bible is now saying another opportunity will be made available to them to reign with Christ a thousand years. But before that one thousand years, they will go through seven years of tribulation. Seven years of torment. If they come over that seven years without receiving the mark of the beast and without bowing down to the beast that they will put in the temple in Israel. The Bible said they were in with Christ 1,000 years. While you and I will be chilling with God the Father. They can reign here all they want. I don't want seven years of suffering for a 1,000 year reign. I want to just stay with God wherever he is and enjoy his presence. But to believe at that time will be almost an impossible task. You can't even carry a Bible. They were beheaded because of Christ and because of his word. Anyone that carried a Bible at that time, it is execution. It is execution. So you want to risk your life for the Bible? And it will prove whether you love God at that time or not. But now that you have the opportunity without persecution, <laughs> you better stay with God. Are you with me? We must make heaven. We can't afford hell. And when I'm using heaven and hell, I'm using them loosely like we normally do. What I mean is paradise. And what I mean is Sheol. We must not go to Sheol. Amen. The last one is the lake of fire. The lake of fire. The lake of fire is now the permanent resting place for those that will not make heaven. The permanent resting place for those that refuse to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The permanent resting place. The devil will be there because that's his permanent resting place. Sheol that we read about will be cast into the lake of fire. Death will be cast into the lake of fire so that nobody will have to die again. Are you, are you with me? It's in the Bible. Ah. Revelation chapter 19. Let me just read verse 20. Revelation 19 verse 20. The Bible says, and the beast was taken. Remember the beast that those that were reign in millennium did not bow down to? That beast was taken. And with him, the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him, and which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them which worshipped his image, 
These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So that beast that would torment men during the tribulation period, he will be cast into the lake of fire. That will be his permanent place forever and ever and ever. And his false prophet. Amen. Now come to Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast where? Into the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Verse 14 and 15 of that same chapter 20. Verse 14 and 15. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So there will be no more hell. The lake of fire would take over all those other worlds. The Bible says this is the second death. And look at verse 15. And whosoever, let me say it again, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast where? Where are the people that were not in the book of life? Show. Sure. They will go through the great white throne judgment and then lake of fire will be their permanent resident green card, US passport, you name it, that's where they will be. Amen. It's not meant for us. It's not meant for you. And it's not meant for me. It is not in God's will for any of us to go there. But if we don't repent and come to Christ and stay with Christ, we give God no option. There is no mercy after death. You heard what Abraham said to that rich man. He said, between us, there is a great gulf fixed. Once you are there, you can come out. When you come out, it's judgment time. So they will go through temporary suffering. For millions of years. I don't know how many. And then they will go through permanent suffering. In the lake of fire. Somebody asked me on Friday. I believe it was my wife. There was the difference between the lake of fire and hell. And I thought about it. And I said, well, the lake of fire will be bigger. First of all. If hell can enter lake of fire. And the lake of fire swallowed hell. Ah, the lake of fire must be bigger. And it must be mightier. Because for something to swallow something else, it must be greater than what is swallowed. So you know, ah, if we are saying hell is terrible, and the lake of fire now swallowed hell that is terrible, what is greater than terrible? Terrible to the power of a, <laughs> a billion. <laughs> Beloved, what is my point in all this? Don't joke with your salvation. Don't play with your salvation. A day is coming where the owner will say, it is time for us to go home. Nobody knows that day. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, it says it is appointed unto man once to die after that judgment. So making it to show does not mean there is hope. Making it to show means judgment has already been pronounced. We're just waiting sentencing. That is all. Just awaiting sentencing. And the sentencing is for eternity. There is no parole. Hello? Here, yeah, people can go to jail. If they behave well, maybe they release them early. There, if you behave well, the devil will knock you on your head. Say, what's wrong with you? We are here for life. What's, be terrible. <laughs> That's my own. Praise God. <laughs> I'm just using my own imagination. But in all seriousness, 
if you are saved, that means you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. That is the only qualification. Keep it. Carefully. Carefully. Keep your salvation. No lying. No stealing. One of our children said in Sunday school, backstabbing. No gossiping. None of those things. Because there will be no liars in heaven. Go and read it very well. If your name is written in the book of life, praise God. But it is possible for that same name to be erased. It can only be erased if we allow it to be erased. But it can also remain there permanently if we allow it to remain permanently by what you do with your salvation here on earth. My time is fast spent. I want us to pray. Let's rise up on our feet. I want us to settle the matter of salvation first. Because we all walk around as if we are saints. <laughs> but only God knows those who are truly saved. It is easy to pretend to people that you are saved. It is easy to, you know, act like you are a believer. Quote a few scriptures. Nobody will know. But deep inside your heart, you know yourself. Whether you are in right standing with God or you are not. That is the first thing that must be settled. If anyone is living in sin and you call yourself a believer, I'm sorry. You're not going anywhere. Adultery, fornication, fraud, lying, cheating. All these things, that person will not make heaven. The only way now is to repent. And repentance means you ask God, first of all, for forgiveness. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us. Is faithful and just to forgive us. Is faithful and just to forgive us. Why don't you go to God right now? If there's anything you need to confess, not to me, not to your neighbor, to God, confess it to God and say, Lord, today I know I have sinned. But please forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy, have mercy. Talk to him yourself. Talk to him yourself. Not believing in Christ is a sin. In fact, it is the greatest sin there is. Because there will be no forgiveness for such individual. But talk to God right now and say, Lord, in any way that I have sinned, please forgive me. And when you repent, it also means that you won't go back and do it again. So you must talk to God yourself and say, Lord, this thing that I found myself in, I promise I will not go back to it again. You are the one that must talk to God yourself. I promise I will not go back to it again. Please be merciful unto me. In the name of Jesus. And then you will pray and say, Father, please accept me as one of your own. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Today I declare you are the God of my life. Make my heart your place of abode, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 
and I promise I will serve you all the days of my life. I will not do anything to drive you away, Lord. Because I want your presence to be with me at all times. Please accept me as your child again. Accept me as your child again. To your glory and to your honor, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen.